beginning of June. You know what that means. It's time for the Electronic Entertainment Expo yet again. Yes, except this time it's a little different. How is it different? Well, you know, a lot of people are leaving. The E3 now. Yeah, what, what, uh, what, who left? Like, oh, EA yeah, left. left first. Actually, Activision Blizzard, I don't think they ever came to the table. Uh, and then you got Sony, the, the big one. At this point, people were, some people were like, why even go to E3? And point? Microsoft also is having their stuff across the street. And they've been having that for about a year or two now at this point. So, so uh, really the only big big company that's there for the big three is Nintendo. Yeah. And some third parties are there still, definitely. There's a lot more of, uh, of like social media stuff going on right there, eSports stuff happening around. Uh, also, just around E3, it seems that a lot of the announcements and a lot of streams and video reveals are happening outside of E3 in general. You know, you got the state of play now, yeah. that has been happening a few times. You had Nintendo with their directs, which they've been having for a long time now yes. at this point. Uh, you have uh, the reveals of games like Death Stranding having its own its own like event. That, yeah. Uh, you got the reveal of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, all, and it keeps going from there. There's a lot of streams over the course of time, not just press events, and not just during E3 anymore, uh, which makes E3 kind of a, an odd situation to be in. Yes. It's but still, we're still here. Yeah, we're still there's still excellent to be we're had at E3. Even though we haven't released much else, we, we're still here to talk about Electronic Entertainment Expo and give our predictions or expectations of all the major companies that are there. Yes. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the no-shows of E3, uh, the, specifically EA and Sony. Yep. Uh, they both usually have press conferences, but in this year, neither. So Yes. Now, we'll start with EA. EA is having that EA Play event, which happens over the weekend or something like that, before E3. Yeah, and they've been doing that for the last two or three years, but this year... They usually year, have a conference. Yeah, they usually have a conference to overdo it. Last year, they had Andrea Rain who hosted it instead, and they had this Anthem VAR segment, and uh, and they also had uh, Anthem had like a Q&A session. And they end. announced that there was a Star Wars game in development, but it was like just the title. Yeah. Well, that's what's changing this year, because the first thing they're really going to start talking about, they're going to showcase Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yes. Now, Respawn Entertainment recently acquired, well, about a year or so ago by the company, uh, they uh, they they've been working on it, and we finally get to see it. We actually saw a kind of a story announcement of it, a story yeah. trailer, and that was a couple months ago at this point. And they said there wasn't going to be any uh, any microtransactions in the game. Oh man, no microtransactions, no loot boxes, There's no season pass. Did they say season? I don't know about that. Know but they but basically they said that they're not going to make it like what they did with Battlefront. They're actually going to give us a single player experience. And this is good because that's what Respawn is known for with their games like Titanfall 2, which actually had a really good single player. Game. Yeah, though Titanfall 1 didn't have a single player yeah, mode. Yeah, but the but to be but, fair. Yeah, but uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order could be uh, could be a really solid game. Really, this They, they really can't mess this up because <laughs> yeah. this is like the third, this is the third or the fourth, fourth time third Star Wars messed game. up. This is the third Star Wars game with a completed title being shown to the masses in a, in a stream. It's not the third game they've been making since they got the Star Wars license, but it, it's the third one that's gotten to this point. Yes. Uh, it's coming out already slated for November, so it's their big game outside of the usual, which we'll get to in a bit. So let's keep going down the rest of the streams that they'll be showing over the course of Saturday. Uh, first, you got Apex Legends. Remember yes. that game that came out in February? I don't remember. It was February. It was February. And it, used, it was getting some good momentum when it first came out. It was uh, taking down a lot of Fortnite's thunder, but then Fortnite came back with all these crazy updates, and, and Apex, Apex Legend was quiet. Yeah, no, one of the big things about Apex Legends is that the developer was like, we're not going, this again, it's respawn. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to push our developers and rush them to get things done, because apparently it is really difficult to get the updates that Fortnite, Fortnite gets. Yes. Um, but they also didn't do a good job with their season pass, the first ba battle pass, or whatever they called it. Their second season looks a little bit more promising, and I bet we're going to see that be realized through their stream of Apex Legends, uh, but right now they've been this kind of coming the, the the kind of has been at this point, and it's only been like three four months. This so they really need to have like a reboot with major campaign changes, major functionality, yeah. new characters, new areas, new weapons, the whole shebang. They really have to change it up, kind of like what Fortnite does on a monthly basis. Yeah, without getting too far into it, I think Apex Legends got too hot too fast. Yeah, uh, it they, burned out. They used so much of their PR power to get a lot of people interested, and then now it's like, well, now you're not growing because the right way because you overcharged it with with popularity. They probably made their money back, but they certainly didn't want it to be done within three months, four months. Yes. So then we have Battlefield Five, right? With that battle royale, right? 
Did they actually release that yet? I can't. I don't I, know. I don't. It hasn't really been a game of like in the zeitgeist I, for me, really. Uh, but I did see that they are going to have Battlefield Five, so I suspect they're going to have a DLC or, or content reveal at, during this point in time. Uh, and to that point, we go to FIFA 20 and Madden NFL 20. Sports, sports, sports. sports. Uh, both of those games are their major sports games, and they're the ones that are probably going to be about the esports side of things. They're probably their stream is probably going to showcase. I'm gameplay. not sure if they're going to have a single player. They, yeah. they had a they had that story element. Yeah, I don't know how successful that was because I'm not a huge sports fan. Well, so FIFA I don't know. went on I think at least three years. The, okay, so maybe they'll keep it going. The Madden one did have one as well last year. In, in 19, I, I one? think so. Uh, I but could be wrong. In the last I've been years, wrong before. But, I mean, I haven't. I remember Madden last year. They had two sport esports guys come on stage and talk about the the belt, and that was like as far as the discussion of Madden went. So I really can't speak much to it. Uh, but that's what Madden's going to have some sequential increases. In you think there are anything, any other sports, or I think those are the two sports? I th no, that this is the order of the of their stream. There's oh, is there something else there's, there's nothing they've shown. Okay. And then finally, The Sims 4. The Sims 4 has a stream. I don't know what that's going to lead to. Some people speculate a new Sims game will be revealed. I don't even think they're going to do that. I think they're going to have new details of contents could be coming out, new microtransact. I mean, <laughs> new content that you will experience in small amounts. Uh, now, is that on consoles? Uh, I think it's on PS4 and Xbox One. Okay, but, but maybe I'll come out for the Switch. It's definitely an announcement. It's definitely PC stuff. <laughs> if, if, if anything, it's PC that Sims 4 is going to be shown on. Yeah, EA doesn't really like yeah. the Switch. That now, much. the no-show of the no-show is Anthem, which is a surprise. So last year, Anthem took a big portion of the show. It was the game they It was the game about. they wanted to talk about. And uh, here we are, a few months after the launch, they really kind of failed to reach certain goals of what was coming out at certain times. Their roadmap was just flustered at this point. I don't, and the fact that it's not here tells me that Anthem has got to go get a reboot of itself internally. Uh, my suspicion is that Anthem, by sometime late summer, will have like a, an attempt to fully reboot the concept of the game, uh, content-wise. And if it doesn't do pass muster, they're just gonna let the game fester and go away. But that's EA. No, no EA originals in the by the way in those streams. Yes, so remember, remember that was that was a big thing. That yes, uh, we had Unravel Two and Sea of Solitude, which we haven't seen. We haven't before. seen that latter one. That one hasn't released yet. Maybe we'll see that uh, somewhere. Or? Maybe, I but I, I'm more inclined to believe that it's come that uh, that it will come out at whenever it's ready. But it, but they don't have any major showcase this time. Those are the highlights of the show last year, and they're not going to be here this time. But this is a longer stream, and I don't think it's they really want to focus on those games. So. That's EA. So the other no-show is... Sony, and that's a surprise. Yeah, those are the big ones, but I wouldn't call it a surprise, because what we're seeing is kind of the chickens coming to roost. Uh, we saw last year, uh, they focused a lot on four specific games with third-party announcements in the middle. Yeah. Uh, it was a very weird show. I did not like it that much. It was a bad presentation. It confused the people watching, it confused people there. I think the announcers were confused. They were all confused. Like, hey, you hope you enjoyed The Last of Us Part Two, but we're gonna talk about you know, for stuff we've already announced. We're gonna, yeah, for stuff we've already announced. 10, 15 minutes. So we'll get back to it. We swear. We'll, we'll get to the end of it. It was weird, and they didn't really have a whole lot to showcase. And even the games that they wanted to get deeper dives on, they just spent like 8 minutes as opposed to 4 minutes on them. Which I guess is more, but you could easily get that with a playable demo, which those games did not have. Yeah. Uh, outside of Spider-Man. Uh, which was the game they were pushing heavily. Of course, because um, it was coming out that year. Yeah, and they had announcements of other games too. Uh, I'm not saying it's fault about Spider-Man. It looked good, and it played good, and it was, it was great. Uh, but... There wasn't a whole lot of new things coming out. There of wasn't. That, and it, there wasn't that. the one more thing. Yeah. But I think the biggest announcement I think at that event was Resident Evil Two. Remake. Resident Evil Two remake was the big thing that came out. Capcom of Capcom seems pretty good about doing those. Like those the, those kickers. Those kickers that come out the following June, January. Uh, so without going too much into the depths of it, what are the games that Sony could have been taking the opportunity to showcase at a year eighty three here? Well, first is Death Stranding. Well, yes. Um, they could have shown it up this year, but instead they had an event. Uh, last week, from when we're recording it, yeah, uh, and they had uh, like, teasers with like handprints on their live stream for a bit, and then finally they dropped a eight and a half minute trailer yeah. that was definitely screaming, "This is a Kojima production." Kojima. Yeah, I didn't even know it was gonna have anything to do with the United States of America until this trailer. Hey, five minutes in, or I mean, I'll be ten seconds in. Hey, United States. I guess how it is. His name is Bridges. He works for Bridges' company. There's Guillermo del Toro, but it's not really him. It's his face, but not his actor, uh, or not the actor. Uh, and there's a guy with a fake mask for a face, and his name is Die Hardman. So <laughs> yeah, it's a Kojima game. 
Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in that trailer. Like yeah. uh, the, the ladder thing and the, the and rolling down the rope and yeah, everything. Yeah, very, it very realistic. It reminded me a lot of uh, Breath of the Wild, how you could traverse anywhere, but then uh, or any open world game, I suppose. Yeah, it's but, a lot more weight in, in your character, though. So. Yes, because the thing on your back. Combat um, was a little shaky in my eyes, and I'm not too sure I understood how BTs or beached things, they never explained that in the trailer, uh, how those work. I do hear there's a multiplayer component where you help each other, but not really. Again, that's something they haven't really delved into. Yeah, there was not a lot of delving that's into. Something that, uh, that's something that, tr like, the trailer or yeah, demo hey, would actually know. help out. It would help. No, it's not at E3 this year. Which is weird. Because it's coming out this year. That was the big announcement. It had, like, a, what, $150, $200? $200, $200 special edition with, edition. with a baby, <laughs> uh, which I'm sure... I'm intrigued. The game is intriguing. It's intriguing. I'm curious. If the gameplay can back up this, the weird story we're getting at, then we're in for a treat. Yes. From... One thing we didn't mention is that their state of play was a big thing of is what they did instead yes. of their E3. Yeah. And their fir their Which, if you haven't heard of state of play, where have you been? State of play is effectively a Nintendo Direct or a streamed video with trailers and release dates yeah. and content that they do like 15 minutes or yeah. 20 minutes showcases, yeah. which happen like once every two, three months. Yes, and the second one of those, which happened just last month, is that it had medieval remake. It showed the first trailer to that, comes yes. out in October. It looked a little janky. Maybe it, it needs, needs to be uh, you know, little, little sandpapered out. Yeah. And uh, so that's a game that probably could have been good to get some good gameplay demos out. Be yes. Able to get some positive reinforcement. But at the moment, I think it just needs a little bit more time to polish and try to get it out as fast as possible. It was so surprised when they first revealed it was PSX. They're like, yeah, we're making it medieval. And they got claps, and then that was yeah, the end of it. Yeah, clap, clap. No trailer to showcase it, and so this I game... I mean, I like the designs of Medieval, and but I, I, I personally have not played Medieval, so I can't tell you how much of an improvement it is, but it clearly looks like they improved a lot. Yeah. And the last state of play, they revealed Final Fantasy VII Remake. After, like, four four years, was it? Four years of It's been silence. a long time since we've first seen it. Yeah, and well, we'll get to that when we talk about Square Enix in the next future video. But it's definitely there, and it was a big thing, and Sony clearly wants it to be there. Uh, so it wants to be associated with it at all costs. Uh, and that's definitely going to help them, since Sony will not be at E3. <laughs> uh, so in our game that is especially uh, desired by a lot of Sony fans is The Last of Us Part Two. Well, I think uh, a lot of people just want yeah, The Last of Us Part Two. The Last of Us Part Two was revealed in a teaser trailer at a PSX, which is much like Medieval. Yeah. Uh, but they showed a trailer for a teaser trailer, and then they showed gameplay footage. Last year. Last year. And that was under the, the weird tent thing. Yeah, and they showed like, a, like, a very emotional story that was very showing a very human part of her, and then she was really gouging someone's throat. Uh, um, was, I'm still not convinced that was, like, direct gameplay. I felt that was definitely a stage no, I mean, setup. It could be an actual gameplay demo just staged very tightly. Um, obviously, they're, going to not, they're not going to want it to be randomized over the course of the... Of the I don't part, know. But I do think that the game has a lot of... Uh, a lot, seems a lot of uh, intensity behind oh, it. Oh, it's intense. And well, the first one they said was about loss. This one's about rage and anger. So I'm expecting a lot of wrath, a lot of aggression, violence. Yeah. It's going to be pretty gruesome, I think. Yeah, I mean... That, have, we been, have we seen any not, not the special. Uh, wait, no. We see the trailer that showed the older woman. They were getting ready for them approaching, and they and then we didn't see them actually. Happen. Maybe there's like a new version of them, or whatever. I, I mean, don't know. I'm but all, honestly, right now. There's a lot of person to person combat. Yeah, we're definitely going to see. We're definitely going to see state of play showcasing it. In the of future. course. Um, I'm not sure it's coming out this year. It's probably a 2020 game. Yeah. That's what that rumor says like February. Yeah. We'll probably get the a state of play to reveal the date. There you go. The other game that we don't have really a date for is Ghost of Tsushima. Yes, yeah, so that was another big thing they showed last year, and uh, it had like a guy playing a wind instrument and everything. It was very nice sounding, but it was, yeah, it was but... very weird. Again, <laughs> it was unexpected. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima they revealed at like Paris Games Week, like, I think two year a year prior. Uh, so Sucker Punch is making it. Mm -hmm. They hadn't they had had a game out since Second Son and its spinoff, so it's been like a whole generation. Yes, it's been uh, a long time. And, and Second Son, I thought was pretty good. And well, yeah, apparently really good for for launch around the launch area of the PS4. PS4. So the fact that this game is so close to launch PS5 is is telling. But uh, the game looks very uh, very uh, mine stealthy. Is, uh, mine's of Sekiro. Very Sekiro <laughs> without without the metallic arm and without the the the, the, the yeah without the, 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 the hook shots yeah hook shot. Um, I do think that it's going to be a little more traditional than, uh... It's going to be stealthy. It's going to be stealthy. It's going to be stealth, it's going to be, there's going to be action, there's going to be fire and buildings and stuff. There's going to, but it says open world was the, was the discussion. So yeah. You kind of encounter these experiences rather than have it be a linear experience. I'm curious to see how it works. It mentioned the Mongol invasion and it mentioned a day, which also reminds me a bit of, uh, 
Death Rising, where a game kind of goes forward in time. So if you waste time doing these missions, you might actually be causing more destruction elsewhere. Yeah. But we haven't had any discussion about this, as far as I can tell. It would have helped if they showed off more of it. It would have been nice if they had an E3 time, you know, to talk about the game. And, We're seeing and a theme depth. in this discussion. Yeah. So uh, Ghost of Tsushima probably ne definitely feels like a next year game. We yeah. haven't heard anything about it since, since E3 last year. It would be a surprise to come. If it came out this year, I would be darn surprised. Uh, I almost think that it's going to be a PS5 game, or at least a cross game, very close to release of the, two, uh, system, of the, the new system. Now, you wanted to talk about this game just because it was at a, a previous state of play. Yes, and it was, brought up. one thing that uh, Sony would do during a press conference would be to talk about the VR, because you can't not talk yeah. about the VR. Well, last year they did Well, they had. Well, no, you're wrong. You're, I'm wrong. Uh, it, well, they did actually have it shown in that little blip period. But like, they hey, still had a VR. Yeah, they still had VR so, stuff. And with, they instead had a state of play before the last one, so like two state of plays ago. They had pretty good, a good number of VR game experiences yeah. that were announced. And the biggest one, I think, that was announced was the Iron Man VR. When it first was announced, I was a little unsure about it, because I, I thought, oh, we're just gonna be, this is a mini-game, we're just going to fly around and shoot things in the sky. But then we're told that it's actually a full-fledged game, that you're going to be able to fly around with it and explore a world. I don't know if it's linear, or, or if it's an uh, open it, world. It's stages, in fact. Uh, whatever it may be, but... It seemed, but based on the impressions of it, this game should not be overlooked, yeah. and that that's great. Um, Is it coming out this year? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, nobody knows anything. Um, but that would be something that if they didn't talk about it in the state of play, they most certainly would have talked about it at E3. Yeah. And now there's one other thing they would have talked about at E3. Yeah. But they're not talking about it at E3. In yeah. fact, they're probably not going to talk about it this year. Well, actually, no, they've already talked about it this year, so I'm already wrong. The PlayStation 5. Yeah, the PlayStation 5, I feel, was the reason why they are not at the Z3. Uh, you know, we, as I mentioned in the beginning of, the, of this, this is all about how... Too many announcements early. Too many announcements came early, where they announced too many of these games in the last couple of years. And so now we're at this point where they're like, we can't announce the next game that we got coming out because it's coming out on the next system. Uh, so rather than showcase the next system, we're going to keep that close to the chest. We're going to talk about how everything is coming out is great and they have third parties to kind of sit back on and they've done that too even last year where they showed those four ga those four games three of them we're talking about this year yeah so only one of their major games came out this year uh last year but god of war was still kind of raging through that yes but third party games definitely help sony fill those gaps and with ps5 coming out they're gonna keep it keep it quiet as much as possible this I'll actually reminds me a lot of what happened with nintendo when they were working on the switch and 2016, where they just showed off Zelda for the Wii U. Yeah. That was kind of the same expectation. Basically, we can't talk about ARMS, we can't talk about Mario Odyssey, we can't talk about any of these games, because they're all coming out for the Switch. So just focus on the games that are coming out for the system that is out now, and that is The Legend of Zelda, because really that was the last game they had for the <laughs> Wii U. And so that was the only game they showed, and then they talked about the Switch later, which is exactly what Sony's doing here with the PS5. Now, the question is, are they going to do a big reveal this year? Or next year, I think it depends on what Microsoft's doing. Because I think if, I think if Microsoft is a full blowout, Sony's going to have to try and steer that narrative back. They they've already talked about the specs, so that means and they already talked about how it's backwards compatible. They're already talking about it now to get some I guess gauge the hype. Yeah, I also think that uh, that it really comes down to the release date because yes. Nintendo did release the Switch information. They initially showed the Switch in October. They had a Switch event in January, and it came out in March. Sony doesn't like that. I don't think Sony is the type of company to announce a system in February and then come out two months later. Yes. They're a the type of person, t a company that will announce a system and then come out six months to a year later. So I think that's why I'm feeling like it might, they may wait until the end of the year, or they may actually really announce it at the fall coming out. Uh, Tokyo Game Show, for instance. Yes. Could, that, could, that could be a big they thing. They Tokyo Game Show say, hey guys, our next system comes out in March. Or it comes out, it, won't, it doesn't come out in April, probably June. It's just in time for E3. Uh, but really, it's up in the air. We're just kind of gauging at this point. Yes, we have no idea what they're going to do. Um, I don't think they can wait until next E3 to showcase the PS5. Unless they really stretch out the releases. Yeah. Anyway, we've been talking a lot for people who aren't going to be here. So, <laughs> yes. So, we're, uh, so what we're going to talk about next, the next video, is Microsoft. And after that, Nintendo. And then after that, the third remaining parties. third parties having major press events. Uh, and we'll be uh, going from there. So check it out. Yep.